All right, I've showed my little logic analyzer before, and uh, it's fine for real slow stuff, and it's 16 channels. Um, so for a lot of times it's fine. Um, a lot of times you might have a, a mixed signal oscilloscope, like this one has a logic analyzer built into it, but they're not real logic analyzers. They're, they're, they're okay, but they're not real logic analyzers. And I really wanted a real logic analyzer. And um, I wanted 32, at least 32 channels. So if you go to buy a real logic analyzer, you can get them into hundreds of channels. So you can look at multiple events all at the same time. And, um, you know, Keysight still builds LaCroix, they still build high-end uh, logic analyzers, not oscilloscopes, but logic analyzers. Uh, they're like $100,000. I mean, they're, they're very, very expensive, but they're like, you know, 12 gigabit sample rates and stuff like that. So, so for modern designs, you still spend a ton of money on logic analyzers. Now, I wanted something that was kind of mid-range, um, but it needed to have 32 channels. Because uh, I wanted to look at things like uh, Z80s, right? So 16 channels uh, of just address, right? And then there's eight bits of data, and then there's a bunch of other signals and stuff. I wanted to look at it all at the same time, so at least 32 channels. And I looked all around, and um, there are a lot of 16-bit analyzers, but not very many 32-bits. And the 32-bits ones, there are some pretty cheesy ones for maybe around $500 that just have terrible software. I've read a lot of reviews, looked at lots of things, and uh, the name that keeps popping up is Zero Plus. Um, uh, they make really nice analyzers. And, you know, you're going to spend about $4,000 on a, and a kind of an up-to-date analyzer from them, a 32-channel. I think they have 64 channels as well for more money, maybe $7,000. Um, and so, yeah, so they're not cheap, and I don't, it's not my budget. So I was poking around, and um, like I said, this name keep, kept coming up. And I found this on eBay for $300. And um, the guy said he had only used it once, and he only had used two probes, and did like a I squared C or something with it, I don't know, something simple. And then he wasn't using it. So I got it for 300 bucks, and it's all, everything was still sealed in the package. I mean, it was it was really really nice. So I'm happy to get it. So let me let me show you what this thing what this thing looks like. Uh, yeah, let me let me get the box out of the way so it's not a camera. All right, so here's the machine. It's fairly large. Um, and uh, you, you'd think it was a router. It just has a whole bunch of USB connections, but those are all of the connections to the, uh, to the uh, probes. Um, so uh, it's USB 3 output. So USB 3 to the computer, software's available. Um, it also has the ability to have external clocks. So you can, instead of putting a probe on this side, you can put a probe on this side and do a separate clock. And it has a trigger input, trigger output. So um, it's really cool. You can set up your oscilloscope for analog stuff and you could have external sync output from the oscilloscope drive the, the sync on this one. So you can synchronize these two machines. So you can look at analog and digital all at the same time. Or you can have the logic analyzer create a, a, a trigger condition and then output a trigger to the oscilloscope and then fire the, fire the oscilloscope. To, so you can do all kinds of good things. So instead of having it all built together with kind of a half cheesy analog, uh, spectrum, uh, um, logic analyzer, you can have a nice one on the outside. So anyway, uh, that's what this thing is. Um, so what do the probes look like? Um, so the probes look something like this. So there is a, a USB-A connector that goes, goes into the front. Uh, there's uh, eight channels on, on the A port, and there's eight channels on the B port, but each probe is two channels. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So 16 and 16 is 32. Okay. And I think they made a fancier model that had uh, 64 channels, but this only does 32. Um, so let's take a look at the probe. So they have a USB-A to micro B uh, connector. And then this is, uh, this is the actual probe. Okay. So it's a circuit board and it has the level conversions and the capture 
and everything uh, everything in one. Then it has little uh, little little connectors, okay, and these are uh, ground on one side and signal signal on the other, and they're shielded little shielded uh, coaxes or shielded wires. They're not really coax; they're shielded wires. So it it saves your signal integrity instead of having a bunch of loose wires going over to some random spectrum anal or logic analyzer. You have it right nearby. And uh, the other thing is that you can control the trigger levels uh, on port A and port B. So you can have eight probes that are at one trigger level and then eight probes that are a different trigger level. So that is pretty nice. All right. So, yeah, let's go ahead and put these back together. All right. So it came with two different types of probes. It came with some uh, probes that are... I'll do that off camera. I'll, I'll take some probes that are TTL level, and I've marked those. So these are supposedly zero to five volt type devices. And then it came with some low lo logic levels, so when, uh, you know, down to 1.8 volt logic levels and stuff, maybe even lower than that. And so you get eight of those, and you get eight of these, and then you get uh, 16 cables. So I've got all of that. All right. Uh, yeah, all of that. Um, and then uh, it does have an external uh, power supply. Uh, so a, uh, let's see here, what is this? Nine volt output at five amps. Because <laughs> uh, this thing has a big uh, uh, chip in it. So it's uh, some type of FPGA. Uh, it also came with, let's see, some other goodies. Came with some more probes. Um, here's, a, here's a bunch of more probes. And then it came with all the little grabbers, the micro grabbers. It came with, uh, came with uh, two bags of the little micro grabbers. Those are handy. And then it came with uh, one, one coax connector, still sealed in the bag, for the trigger levels. I mean, the uh, synch synchronized trigger between your oscilloscope and the logic analyzer. So, uh, yeah. I do, I do like it. Um, so I say today, let's uh, let's look at on the inside of this thing today, and then uh, on a separate video I will hook it up and show you show you how it operates. So we need to get a few screws out of here. So hang on. All right, let's take the top off of this one, and there we go. So, lots going on, right? Uh, these are all the inputs. Uh, here is the uh, RAM. This one has 16 megabytes of RAM. Uh, the power comes in here. There's a solid state fuse on the power supply. That's nice. Uh, lots of jumpers. Looks like maybe lots of configurations. I uh, don't know about that. Um, and uh, yeah, let's uh, zoom down a bit. Uh, so you can see lots of uh, DC to DC converters for the logic levels and stuff. So, man, there's a whole bunch of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of those little guys. And then there's some obviously some other ones. DC to DC converters over here. Yeah, so lots of uh, lots of stuff going on here. Looks like there's a reset button. Can't really reach it from the outside, but probably for debugging. And then the magic chip is under here. I don't know what, the, I'm not going to take off the heat sink, but uh, the magic chip is under that little fan there. So that's, that's what does everything. Um, now there's a whole bunch of switches. This kind of fascinates me. I'm not sure what's going on here. Uh, can we zoom down? Yeah. Uh, yeah, these switches, let me put something to point with. Yeah, these these switches right here, right? Every single, like every single input has these switches, and uh, so I don't know. I guess maybe different configurations depending how the board was built. You set the switches differently, but then there's a whole bunch of jumpers as well. Yeah, all kinds of all kinds of stuff on this thing. Uh, there's another fancy big chip here that talks to the USB. Um, yeah. Look at all of the... Yeah, this thing is just power supply, power supply stuff after power supply stuff. There's a, you know, 
regulator, 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 all over the, all over the board. Um, analog devices chip there, yeah. All kinds of, all kinds of crazy stuff on this board. Anyway, that's what makes it expensive. Uh, looks like there's a JTAG uh, jumper here, maybe. Uh, wow. There's some writing on here. I mean, just talks about R's and C's, and because because you can't label them because they're like like here they're they're all smushed together, so they label them side by side. <laughs> Uh, that's an interesting way to do it. And then there's a whole bunch of uh, SMA connections over here, which are not populated. So I'm not sure what they were, what they were going for here. If there was something, something different, all kinds of random connectors and stuff. Yeah. Maybe there's a, fancier models. Like I said, this is an older one. It, this one can't run the newest software, but it can run an okay version of the software. Um, I must say the uh, uh, support team at this company is really good. I told them I had this unit and I tried using their very latest software and it seemed to be a little bit buggy. And they said, yeah, it's not, this doesn't support this older board. And they gave me a link to download the uh, software for the version I have. So. Kudos to them. Yeah, I don't know. Lots and lots and lots of stuff. Um, yeah, so the next video, I will hook it up, make it work. Let's see how it works.